Yeah, so enough of all the travels and tours. It's high time we got things started and um, we just want to start this project so I can show you guys how to raise broilers from dayhood to maturity life right here before you. So right now I've decided to get things ready and um, it's very important that I show you every step of the way from preparing your chicken house to bringing them in, all the care you're going to give them during brooding and how to succeed at the end of the day so if you're just joining the channel welcome to diy agri i'm your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner so this is one place where you can learn almost everything you need to succeed in poultry and if you are yet to subscribe to the channel please go ahead and hit the subscribe button give us a like if you think you like the content and then hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads so getting things ready getting things uh, prepared this is supposed to be the brooding chamber this is the brooder guard and uh, it's all set with plywood and um, this is the gas brooder the infrared gas brooder i think this is what we are going to be using but then just for the sake of those who will not be able to use this i'm also going to show you how to use your charcoal pot how to use your charcoal pot and one very important thing you want to know like i've shown you guys before i've fumigated this house i even used a pressure washer to wash it so that all cobwebs are taken out of the way but then i'm going to also fumigate it for the last time i'm going to cover the house after this video i'm going to be showing you the disinfectant that i'll use i'll cover the house and then fumigate it for the last time and then make sure that i go i remove these drinkers i service them and also disinfect them very important you want to make sure that you disinfect your feeders and drinkers before the chicks come in so after doing this fumigation i'll leave it till tomorrow then i'll, I'll open the side curtains for hair to come in a little and for the uh, chemical to go out then i'll drop it again while we expect the chicks to come in i'm still going to be doing a little bit of nailing here and there the tarpaulins i'm going to have to nail them to the base of the house so the bridge doesn't take it up and down so that's very important you want to make sure that you disinfect the house and i'm so i'm also going to be bringing in the feed for the chicks i'm going to be bringing it this very evening so it is also important that you get ready the feed that they'll be using at least for the first two weeks the feed that they will use should be on ground you don't want to keep the feed for too long because most of this feed in fact whole poultry feed that we use now have three months expiry date so you don't want to have them expire on your farm so two weeks supply is enough for the start and if you want to get everything you use for the whole six weeks then thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up and um if you also follow the trend you see that feed prices are only going up they are never dropping so it would be a good idea if you can get everything you need for the six weeks period ready 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 before you even start at all so you have to make sure that the shavings are spread especially the one in the place where the chicks will be staying i pre i prepared these shavings long ago actually you can see the charcoal there yeah i prepared it a, uh, a long time ago so you want to make sure that everything is said before you even fumigate so that you can also disinfect these wood shavings and another reason why you want to spread your wood shavings early enough is because sometimes the wood is still wet it's still a little wet so if you spread it like this the air and the sun dries it and makes it very good for your cheeks because you don't want to have a damp wood shavings that can breed emera species the organism that causes coccidiosis so and also a lot of fungal diseases can come from there and it's not just good feed pouring in that area where there is damp shavings can also cause a lot of havoc on your farm so these are some of the reasons why you want to spread the shavings early enough early enough so i'm going to be showing you what i use to disinfect the house and the process just 
very quickly before I go get the chicks feed. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, just before I show you the fumigation procedure, I just thought it would be a good idea if I show you how I made this brooder guard. So, as you can see, I made it out of plywood. I, uh, this is just a full sheet of plywood cut into two, a four by eight plywood cut into two, making two by eight, two by eight. I actually got two of it. This is just one that I have used. And um, after cutting it, you just bend it like this and make something like this. I have a tie rod in between a in between two one by twos. You just need a kind of small gap in between this. Let me get it close to you. Okay, so a tie rod is what I use. If you have thick tie rods, you can actually use only tie rods and you just have two on the side and one at the center then leaving a lot of gap here and that's what you're going to use as a peg to peg the two ends yeah you just peg it down like this these things here are just cheeks they are not that stubborn they are not like my dogs that will pull it away so they are just good inside these confines they're just good the same thing to the other side so i found this to be a cheap alternative to the ready-made brooder guards and that's what i've been using you know in fact since about seven eight years now this is what i've been using and it's been working good okay so it's time to fumigate and i have here with me my knapsack sprayer loaded with about 10 uh yeah loaded with about eight to ten liters of water and i'm going to be putting the disinfectant into this i won't be needing the pressure washer this time because this house has been cleaned has been washed already i just need another level of disinfection and that's why i'm i'll be good with this so uh i'm going to be showing you the disinfectant that i'm going to use today i actually use two disinfectants uh mostly i use um this moriga jamicide and i also use vinco kill so as you can see this is moriga jamicide it has chlorophenol inside it and chlorophenol is very effective in destroying a lot of germs that cause diseases and um as you can see here the dosage the dosage for animal husbandry here says general disinfection to prevent disease says one to four hundred parts that is one part of water to four hundred i mean one part of the disinfectant this morigat to four hundred parts water four hundred parts water but there's one very funny thing if you put that one part to 400 liters of water I sh i'm very sure that a lot of you there will feel oh this is not enough i have to kill these germs man and I you go just had more you had more you had more until you feel like it's okay and i'm also a victim of that i also do that sometimes i feel just feel, okay let me add more let me add more okay but we still believe that that is effective you know because these things have been tested and um okay so i'm just gonna be adding a little that's enough already that's enough already and i'll shake Now let me check if it's enough. <laughs> uh, like you, I feel like adding a little more. <laughs> oh, oh, I covered it. Yeah, just a little won't kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let it kill the gems, not my cheeks. Okay, so we are ready. And I'm just going to put this where it's supposed to be, on my back, okay? No wonder this thing was wet in my back the last time. It's not really tight, okay? Okay, I think we're good. Oh, yeah. So... Just pump 
and release. One reason why I'm not dropping this cotton before doing this, one is I want you guys to see me clearly, and two, I'm a little bit allergic to this serious or conk smell. So I want to do it and quickly go out and drop the cotton. But if you can do it, dropping the cotton, that's perfect. Okay. I know someone will say I'm focusing so much on this. Yeah, those guys are fragile. The chicks are coming from, they're like so pure. And uh, they have no experience of diseases or pathogens. So you want to keep the place. Mm, this thing is already choking. You want to keep the place as clean as possible. And you know, I still have time for this wood shavings to dry up so I can just load it with the disinfectant. Well, you know, oh, I'm supposed to remove this. This is my classroom. Mm. Coco. Please bring my face mask. Yeah, I finally got myself protected. Okay. You want to make sure that you get to every corner. Very important. All these partitions I'm going to do justice to them all all right so that's the end of this session i'm done with the fumigation i'm going to drop the remaining part of the house where i've not dropped the cotton now and tie everything together very quickly and um just so you know um these drinkers and feeders are not what the chicks will be using when they come so i'm going to be raising the small chick feeder and drinker in a, in a disinfector solution just to disinfect them before I place it right here. <sighs> I need to go out now. And the next video is going to be on broiler uniformity. A lot of people call me and complain, okay, my cheeks, uh, some are growing, some are not growing and all that. There are a lot of things that you two need to do to contribute to their uniformity. And I'm going to be showing you that in the next video. So if you're here to hit the subscribe button, please go right there and eat it right away. <sighs> Click the like button and also hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Thank you very much for watching. Till we meet again, peace.